Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, uh, this is Paige Bradenkamp, and um, welcome to episode one of Youth Services Spring Chat. Today, it's going to be all about summer reading. Um, basically, Chris and I wanted to get together and um, get you guys together so that we can share ideas, find out what other people are doing for summer reading, um, maybe get some ideas, uh, just sharing them across the board. Um, to begin with, I would just like to say that while this is going to be an interactive discussion, I would like to say that if you're not speaking, please, please put yourself on mute. Um, that way we can avoid distractions and interruptions. Um, but that being said, this is definitely a place where we want you to contribute your ideas, share. This is a discussion and we're just trying to bring everybody together. So on a common communication platform to find out what you guys are doing, to find out what each other are doing. And then also, if there's something that we at the State Library can help you with, um, we will do everything we can to do that. Um, let's see, I'm going to, oh, also this is being recorded. So those people who weren't able to join us this morning will still be able to, to view this. And I am going to now turn this over. Well, we're gonna talk about, um, what are you guys doing now? You know, what is going on in your libraries in terms of summer reading? And if you don't want to unmute yourself, then um, then feel free to put it in the question box or the chat box. And I think, Paige, that, um, good morning, everybody. Um, <laughs> I think, do we have to unmute them all? Oh, yeah, I think we do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going and unmuting everybody. Okay. And then you can mute yourself if you don't want to speak or if you're not speaking at the time. Um, so we hope we haven't caught you off guard by unmuting you now. <laughs> <laughs> so Paige, um, can I show my screen or do you want to bring up the agenda? Oh, is my screen not showing? Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the agenda, but yeah, if you want to show your screen, you sure can. Okay. Well, that's what I was going to show. Okay, I forgot to click share or screen. So. Okay, so, so what we're going to do, Paige, are you, were you going to say something? Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, feel free to speak up. And I hope you guys, I hope you do have that capability, even since we've unmuted you. Well, let's test it out. Um, say, Bonnie, could you just um, say good morning or something? And they may not have speakers at their end. Hello, Bonnie. I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, hi. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we don't, we have the power to unmute people, but we're not always sure if they have a microphone at their end. So we just want to make sure that you all know that you can can speak in this or you can um, just put something like Paige said in the chat and we'll monitor that. So what I wanted to do is just kick this off with uh, the agenda that's on your screen. And this is just um, Paige and I were talking in our library development meeting about what we're seeing you know, um, all, all around the state and within the things that are coming out from nationwide about what's happening with summer reading. And so we just wanted to provide a forum where you could talk about what is happening in your communities, about whether you're canceling parts of it, whether you're kicking it off early virtually, uh, things like that, what you're gonna do going forward, and then how you're doing it. Are you using, um, the tracker programs or if you've gotten different funding, when are you doing it? And most importantly for us, 
what you need help with and we'll try to find the proper person or uh, get that information. So I just wanted to open it up now to what are you doing out there? This is Beth Cook from Laramie County. Can you hear me? Yes. I can. Hi. So um, we are doing Beanstack. We, I took um, money that I'm saving from not doing events. Um, and we're able to pay for that for the next couple of years. It's going to be a whirlwind trying to get it off the ground, but we're using, um, we're going to try and model it after our, what we've done in the past as much as possible so that the patrons don't have too much of a shift. But the thing that was really appealing about this was the app and the mobile capability of this software. And um, so we're just at the beginning of that and we still want to try and start May 22nd, which was our original date but we may have to push to June 1st. Um, it just depends on how quickly we can get it up and running. Um, one of the things that I would love to hear about is how, or ideas how people are doing virtual incentives or prizes, because typically we give a coupon prize at every level. So they get four coupon prizes and then a book sometimes five coupons, and that is not feeling like it's panning out this year because of this situation. So I would love any ideas of what you guys are doing, um, things that you've done for drawings. How would you, how, if we do a book at the end, how would you go about getting the kids and teens the book? Do they get to pick it, et cetera? Hi, this is Monica from Albany County. Um, so, like, we're going to stay with our original starting date, which is May 29th, which is the first day that they are out of school, in theory. And we are going to extend our program this year through the first day, or the last day of um, school before summer starts. Um, so we're going all the way through August 25th or, or something like that this year. Those, those were our original plans. Um, like Beth, we're going to try an online tracker, but we're going to be going with Read Squared. And we just literally decided that this week. We had our first summer reading meeting in the New World official meeting this week. So we're going to try Read Squared. Um, again, it has a mobile feature to which will allow people to start the program on that May 29th date, should we not be open or should they not want to come in? Um, as to Beth's question about the prizes, um, we started last year giving a sign-up bag where they got their log and some goodies in their sign-up bag. We're going to create sign up bags again, but they can pick those up any time that they want to come in. So they wouldn't have to come in necessarily to start it because they can start with the app or the Read Squared um, program. And then for prizes, we had done the same thing like every five, you get a prize. And so what we are thinking we're going to do this summer is they just get everything all at the end and we're gonna have everything in one bag so that everything's sort of less touch and stuff like that. Um, that's about as far as we know. We might throw in some drawings for special things along the way um, and we would be purchasing gift certificates from or items from local businesses to support our local economy. And then 
um, we're not going to let people start picking up the final gift um, bags until mid-July so that it gives more time. And then one thing that Beth didn't um, reference, but that I have the biggest question I, about, I guess, is what everyone's doing with programs. We've pretty much decided that we're going to be canceling the performers and the big programs and are now in the process of trying to figure out what we do instead. So I guess that's what I'd be most interested in hearing about from everyone else. This is Beth again. <laughs> I'll talk. Um, shocking, I know. But um, as far as events go, right now we're working on getting um, the performers that may be willing to do a virtual event um, to do that. I am not super thrilled about that process or prospect, but um, that allows us to still hopefully pay them a little bit because this can't be a super easy time for them. Um, also, it gives our patrons an option to do something, I guess. Um, we're also looking at doing like the online, like virtual things. So we have breakout EDU, we have a couple of those sets. And so we'll do, hopefully we'll be able to do a couple of virtual escape rooms. Um, we think we'll try like a choose your own adventure collaborative. I don't know. We're still testing that out. Um, we are currently doing like short little snippets of online story time so that they can see the kids can see their regular storytellers. Um, but and we don't have any plans to expand that, but we probably will continue doing that. Um, we've also really discussed doing take home packets of stuff. So um, making sure this is all. I have no idea if we're actually going to do this, obviously, but um, we talked about if there's a way through our summer lunch sites to deliver um, basic craft supplies that they would need, like a pair of kid scissors, a glue stick, crayon, something so that they have like basic stuff and then we would be able to deliver craft or activities throughout the summer or if families are coming in, they could do a take home um, family activity of some kind. I don't exactly know what that looks like. Our events team is still processing that, but I, we, I personally, not, I don't have any official word on this, but I'm anticipating that we will have very few, if any, events or programs in the building this summer. Hey, this is Paige. I have a quick question for both of you and anyone else who wants to chime in. If you're doing um, pick up or take home um, projects, kits, packets, things like that, how are you how are you making it so that well, I, I don't know, are you leaving them out? For a while are you packing them with gloves are you what are you doing to maybe not i i don't i don't even know how to say it spread the virus right. or... yeah exactly this is beth i i don't know if this will ever even be approved um so much of it is a waiting game to see what our status of opening is i mean right now we're not even doing in Laramie County, we're not even doing an alternate book delivery service or anything at this point because we're trying to make sure we are um, complying with the governor's um, directives of staying mm -hmm. home, things like that. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, it's possible that we aren't even able to do that because of those situations okay. of the spread. I mean, if people can't come in the building, then that's a, an issue and then trying to figure out how to if delivery oh yeah there's tons of issues with this and it will all depend on the status of the directives and different things like that if 
we are able to do some of that, I imagine we would need to be doing the gla the gloves and masks and stuff like that, making sure that we're packing them with that and that we have social distancing somehow still. Mm -hmm. I am not entirely sure. <laughs> well, something um, I had come an article I had read. There are some libraries that are using Facebook Live and doing like, um, sorry, I wrote this down, um, craft along tutorials. So like, you know, doing paper cranes, you know, and it's on Facebook Live. People can access that at home and not have to pick up um, stuff. Now that doesn't, I mean, obviously for those who don't have access to Facebook Live, that could be a problem. But I mean, what about something like that? This is Bonnie from Kirk County. Yes. And of course, we're way smaller than anybody else, but I am, we're doing curbside delivery. So I have parents that are either messaging me with a list of books that they are interested in or calling. And I pack up those books and I try to pick an activity that will go along with at least one or two of the books. And I round up all the supplies and I put that in the bag. And then they, we deliver, we, they'll call when they pull into the parking lot and we do the curbside. I also do up a, instructions on whatever activity I put in there. I've been doing some um, STEM activities. I've just been doing some plain free time crafty things. Um, trying to find stuff online that go with certain books. There's a lot out there from the publishers and then I'll, like I said, I just round up all the supplies and put it in with it. Okay, and you use gloves when you do this or is that? We don't because they're, I mean, like I said, we're small. Um, mm -hmm. We are all approved to be in the library working. Okay. And we're working, you know, we're at the library every day. There's, we only have four people in the building. Okay. And then all the books that are returned, when the books come back to the library, they are wiped with Clorox wipes and put in quarantine for a week before we shelf them again or touch them again after that. Okay. Great, thank you. I this have a question in the King County. Uh, we are doing much the same thing that Bonnie is with the curbside delivery. Um, we do have a couple story time crafts left that I have been giving out to my parents for story times um, that are we had planned to give out for story times we were doing right now if they had come into the building. But we have been told by our director that not to plan to do any kits or give crafts out because we, he would want us to sanitize every little piece that we would be giving out to people as well as kind of a perception thing. How does that make us look if we're giving out stuff that could be from unknown origins and um, could possibly be contaminated in some way that we don't know. Um, so I'm planning for summer reading to not have any kits that I'm giving out and everything that we do will be stuff that they will be able to get from home or be able to acquire themselves. Um, and then we're still working on figuring out what we're doing exactly as far as like reading the platforms or apps. Um, so any advice you guys have who've already picked your ones, why you picked them and what you liked and didn't, didn't like about looking at them, that would be very helpful. Um, and then we're also looking at going like for a prize list um, summer reading program. I've looked at some really interesting ones that have been done throughout the country. And one of the ones that I liked was in Massachusetts where they actually, the kids work towards a prize that, that, that stays in the library that we purchase for ourselves, but the kids get to help choose. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting and would be an incentive. It's like, okay, we won this. So now, you know, when we're open back up again, come in and check out this cool prize that we got that you guys can come in and play with or something. Um, so that's kind of where we are in Lincoln County a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear what everybody else's ideas are. Paige, I had just a couple of questions come in um, that I wanna get to why we have this a lull in the action here. Sure. Um, let me just put them out so I can read them. Has anyone used ReaderZone as a tracking program 
And can Beth share the cost of bean stock and how much does read squared cost? This is Beth. Um, the bean stack is based on your, your service population. Um, so for this year, we are, um, sorry, I'm thinking, because we're doing a shorter contract, it's a little bit more. So our initial startup is $2,600 plus a $300 sign up initiation. So what is that? 20, I don't know. Anyway, um, I can't math clearly. So we're doing about 3,800 um, this summer and then next summer will be the 2,600. Um, if you do, if you have smaller service population, obviously that's smaller. Um, we're just, it's not 38,000. Oh, sorry. 3, 000, it, <laughs> it's like 3,000 maybe. Okay. Sorry. It's like under, it's under $3,000. And that's based on our service population in our county of 98,000 is what they came up with, which I'm sure the census will show at some point. But anyway, um, so yeah, I understand that it's expensive. Um, I got really lucky and have program money because I'm not doing any events. So that's how much Beanstack is. And this is Monica again from Albany County. So I also got a quote from Beanstack for our service population, which is about 38,000. Uh, I think that if we just signed up for one year, it was 1495, but that did not include the mobile app. If you wanted the mobile app, it was maybe another $400 on top of that, um, about, that's for our size. Um, as for the read squared, oh, and then also there's the startup fee for the first one, so like that mentioned, which is, yeah, about, it's like 10% of whatever price that you pick or something. So then like another $200 or so. Um, read squared is, or again, our service population is how they base it, it is going to be $995. And it does include the mobile app as part of that. So obviously price was one reason that we chose the read squared, but another thing with being stacked from what I understand for those of you that may be considering it now is that it takes a long time to set up. I think I've seen like 45 days or so. So if you're planning on starting, you know, in June, you're really up against the wall right now. Um, and they're especially busy, obviously, because people across the country are all switching over to these type of things. So the read squared, like I said, we just decided for sure on that this week. I'm going to be contacting um, them to get that set up. They say the setup's only um, a few days. So I'm hoping to be able to start working on it next week. Um, Darcy has a comment about being stuck. Um, let me see if I've unmuted you. Are you okay, Darcy? I think I am. Can you hear me? We can. There you go. Okay. This is Darcy, Becky, and Marcy at Camp County. So I guess we're kind of questioning that um, our quote that we got for being back was $14.95 per year for your commitment. Um, and that did include the mobile app and that was Campbell County. And Marcy said she gave them a certain population of 46,000. So that's kind of, I, I guess I'm gonna go back and look. Our um, quote from Reed Squared was $700 per 95 per year. Um, one of the things to be aware of with Beanstack is if you want to launch June 1st, like Monica was saying, today is your deadline. Um, otherwise, they're not guaranteeing any launches until, what was it, June 15th. So uh, you would have to sign up today. We're looking at, 
I don't know. I, I think I think it feels like you guys are farther ahead than we are here in Campbell County, but we're looking at probably read squared if we do anything just because of that deadline. So I'm sorry. Not ready to that kind of commitment. Darcy, how much did you say the the read squared was for you? Six ninety five a year. And then I don't remember startup cost on that, but the, the subscription was six ninety five per year. And includes mobile app. That, that includes mobile, included the mobile app. Yes. Thank you. We're still doing our comparison on that, um, but this was going to be kind of part of our strategic plan anyway to move to an online platform. So I guess in our mind, we can test something this year, and if it doesn't work, we can go in a different direction. So. I mean, it was already in the strategic plan. It just wasn't that we were going to launch it quite this quickly, but that's all. Yeah, yeah. And that was the nice. same for Albany County too. I wanted to, I wanted to switch to a tracker this year, but we were also making some other changes in how we did the program. So I didn't want to hit people with so many changes all at once. Right. But now, since so many changes are happening beyond our control, it seems like the perfect year to kind of try it we're still going to have the same the same printed log that we've always had um which we have a graphic designer working on and making all fancy so that kind of seems like a waste a little bit this year but this way we'll be able to test out both at the same time and see how both work so in a way it's kind of a good thing um one of the reasons that we didn't go with reader zone for um whoever asked about that i think that was kelly um <clears throat> is that um, we are adding activities in as part of options of what they can do. So going more with the summer learning program, not just the summer reading program model. And so both Beanstack and um, Read Squared has the option where you can incorporate activities, things for them to do as part of the summer program. Whereas Reader Zone um, looked really great, super simple, very affordable. Um, but the only things that you could track are things that were reading related, like pages, minutes, chapters, books. They had a lot of flexibility, but none of the activity type options. So that's one of the reasons that we went with, um, or we're going to be going with um, the read squared option. And then for Darcy, I'm curious about that, the, that read squared was so much less for you, so I'll have to ask about that. But you know what? Um, um, Marcy just corrected me, Monica, and our quote was $16.95 with the mobile app. So she had to pull it up on her email for the bean stack. For the bean stack, no, but I mean read squared, because if you guys are a bigger squared, population. Yeah, what we got was $6.95, so that's interesting. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, our, our bean stack one was... $14.95 if we just did one year, but if we went with a three-year commitment, it was $11.95, but you had to, you know, commit for the three years. And again, that was without the um, mobile, the mobile distinction. And that makes sense for your service population. That makes more sense, but I'm not sure what you need square. So it might be yeah. something to go back and research. Yes, for sure. This is Bonnie, and I have a question for Monica on the, she said she's going to add activities yes. to count towards the reading log. Yes. or you know in learning log what kind of activities are you going to add to that um so we i've broken it down into five categories of things that they can do um the categories are read create explore discover and engage and read is going to be you know the read the read part um, um reading daily um they'll count for each day at least 20 minutes that's going to be what counts for the read they can be read to they can listen they can read whatever blah 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 um for create it's going to be um creative type things so drawing writing um doing crafts, that sort of thing. So we're gonna you know, have instructions and suggestions and that sort of thing under that. Um, I had been creating you know, lists all throughout the year and now I have to kind of like 
re-look through them to see what's going to translate better into the uh, virtual world. Um, but like having re writing prompts and, you know, drawing prompts and that sort of thing. Explore is going to be encouraging them to um, um, utilize things in the community. So again, the original idea was, you know, going to some of our local museums, but now that that's not going to happen, you know, finding out more, you know, visiting our planetarium, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but basically, um, community-based community things. Discover are going to be more the STEM type things. We have one of our staff members who got super jazzed at WLA, WLA um, last um, August, I guess, with the citizen science program. Yay, she went to. citizen science. Excellent. Yeah. So she's going to be coming up with some citizen science activity um, things for them to do. Um, and then we'll have like Lego challenges building, you know, under the engineering and that type of thing. So STEM type things. And then engage is engaging with the library and using the library resource and trying to, um, you know, have them try different things. Like we checked out board games. So check out a board game and play with your family. But again, now not knowing what's going to happen, I'll have to tweak some of those things. But um, I'll probably do some stuff with our databases, um, you know, maybe like a little quest that they have to do where they find information from the databases and stuff. But um, our main goal, what we were working for this year for summer was um, that engage feature where people like really engaged with the library. And we were hoping to have that be more of them hanging out and spending more time at the library and all that stuff. So obviously that's not working, but um, those were kind of the main categories. And I'd be happy um, to share whatever thank I come you. up with whenever I have a final list um, too. <laughs> And Monica, let me know if I can, this is Chris, if I can help with anything on the databases or any of you for that oh, matter. That'd be wonderful. Yeah. I, mean, I have a question um, from Mary Rhodes. Have libraries already canceled performers? We had Corey Cullinan and Cody Landstrom coming in June and July. This is Darcy. Um, I have Corey coming also and I have not had a response from his email um I emailed him to say okay what are you thinking um do you want to cancel do you want to do something virtual do we want to just wait and see and I have not had anything back from him the other performers who I've who we've had contracted that I've contacted have pretty much said, can we wait until May before we call it? And that's, that's where I'm at with it too. So, um, but Corey's been interesting. If you follow him on Facebook, he's like, you know, really putting things out there, but he's not responding to email. So I don't know what to tell you about that, Barry. This is Beth at Laramie County. I, we haven't officially canceled anything. We're just exploring mm -hmm. the um, possibility of the virtual. We thought about, um, we have a guy, a pint-sized polka guy coming and he's willing to do it outside maybe, but I'm hesitant to commit to that because if we still have to socially distance, um, uh, anyway, there's a lot of issues that could come with that. So right now we're really just focusing on the virtual. If the performers can't do virtual, um, we probably won't have them do physical performances in the building. So we would postpone or um, cancel. This is Kelly. We are seeing if we can reschedule some of ours because um, we were told not to have any performers in June because we will probably still not be able to have activities and we did have performers scheduled in June. So we're looking at possibly rescheduling for July or canceling outright um, if they can't do a virtual performance, which we are still exploring as well. This is Monica. I was going to contact performers this week since we just had our meeting and 
um, basically um, tell them that would like to consider them for maybe doing some fall programs, except at this point, I don't even know that, but what we hear in the news that planning any big, um, you know, things, congregations of people, is gonna be a good idea for quite a while, but that, that also be the first, you know, first on our list for next summer as well, trying to hire them for, for then. And then like Beth was saying to, I was going to just see what they might have in mind for virtual programs and, you know, see what that would cost. Obviously, it would hopefully not be the same as what, you know, the live in-person one does. And so kind of like weigh the benefits of that. So it might be interesting for those of us that are contacting performers and, um, ones that are going to have uh, virtual events that, you know, maybe are recorded or one way or the other, if we could, you know, maybe share that information so we could kind of, um, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter where the performers are if they <laughs> are doing virtual programs, you know, so we could um, maybe take advantage of some of, some of the other ones that are already looked into or can contact it, I guess. Um, this is Chris again. Tamara had a question um, for virtual performances. What are you suggesting? Facebook, Facebook Live, Zoom. I. This is Darcy. Um, I think that's probably a little bit up to the performer and and their performance rights and things like that. Um, I also. Like, I, I haven't really wrapped my brain around it, but the best option that I have thought of is, is maybe doing a Zoom so that we could give that login information to our patron base, because I don't know how to, um, I mean, they don't want to just put out their content, you know, they need to get paid, they need to get compensated, and I don't know how to exactly do that without having kind of a limited um, limit on the audience, I guess, is what I'm saying. You could do a Facebook group, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A private group, maybe, and perform there. This is Beth. That's basically yeah, what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. And this is Monica. And I was going to ask how many of you, because we only have our main Facebook page. Um, we don't really have subgroups. Actually, actually, we have a gaming group that does have a subgroup. So I guess it's not unprecedented. But that's one thing that I was thinking about was having a kids or a summer reading or a, some kind of a subgroup where we could, you know, have it be a little bit more controlled um but i was just curious who else does that it's not something that i've approached our library about doing yet we don't talk about social media in campbell county so i can't <laughs> answer your question <laughs> we're just we're just getting like a papal dispensation to use our facebook page to do story time right now and we'll have we'll lose that when ever we open back up so <laughs> This is Rhonda from Lincoln County. I started up a Facebook Messenger and just put people on there and told them to add people, and that's how I've communicated and shared and done packets for crafts and that. So that would probably work really well to have that or even set up a group, like they said. And I get pretty good response. I think with the messenger, it's really nice in the fact that you can post a video pretty easily <clears throat> and it uploads nicely. Plus, you um, it's very private and you get to see the responses quickly. Your phone alerts you. Is it hard? This is Bonnie. Is it hard to, through the Facebook messenger, to get everybody that you want to include and then so there again, what, if, what if you have parents that aren't on Facebook or don't have messenger 
I do have a few that aren't on there. And so those people that are friends with them have communicated with them. And I do get a lot of responses of so and so would like this also. And I'm able to get that put together for them. And then they're being picked up by that person that commented for them. There was another question. I can't remember what it was. This is Monica again. I was going to go back to the outdoor um, idea. One thing that I haven't made a call on yet is we every year do a stories at the park program. So our story times are done at different parks throughout the community. And so at this time, I'm thinking that may still be something that we can do. Um, I had the idea that you could maybe buy some carpet squares or towels or something and kind of spread them out and have the different family groups um, sit on them or encourage them to bring, you know, a towel or something and kind of spread people out a little bit. Um, we sometimes get some pretty large groups, but that's mainly because daycares or day camps will bring their whole group. So to counter that, um, I'm planning on contacting the different um, daycares and camps that we know normally come and scheduling separate times for them that are not publicly posted or even possibly just going to, um, like if they have space at their center or in their yard or whatever, um, we would just go there um, so that we could keep our crowds smaller. So that's something I'm still considering. And then also wondered about other outdoor things, um, like what people think, obviously nobody really knows. We've done a 3rd of July parade for the past few years. That's been one of our most popular events. And basically all we do is have, um, decorations, red, white, and blue decorations, kids bring their bikes or scooters or wagons and they decorate it and we walk around the block and it's like one of the, and then we have popsicles at the end. It's one of our most popular things. I'm wondering if we could maybe do something like that if we're outside and kind of keep spread apart, but I don't know. I show an outdoor movie every summer and mm -hmm. that could possibly be if you had a park situation where you could shine it on the side of a building or something that could possibly work for the distancing part yeah i think it's going to come down to what the communities you know we're all going to be waiting for the mandates of what's going on in our communities and what we're allowed to do and when so i don't i don't envy you all with your things on hold or planning I guess the safest thing is to not not promise anything and then if we can add things later, you know, all the better. I think people have been very understanding um, with everything. So that's helpful. I just want to mention too, um, we discovered that I had to unmute Darcy. If some of you are not able to unmute yourself and you wanted to talk, um, just put a question, uh, check that question box and I will get it. And then I can unmute you from here. I have the power or you can just put your question in the question box and we can get it out there. Let's see, I, um, let's see, this just came in, um, Mary Rhodes, I'm going to contact a few parents and get feedback from them on what they are thinking about using the library, about what they are thinking about using the library this summer.
Um, and Dr. Anderson, uh, we are contemplating starting curbside checkouts. Someone mentioned cleaning materials and quarantines for return. Who was that, Chris? Anyone doing anything else? Any, uh, Tamara Anderson. And she also asked, um, is anyone doing anything else to pass their way to clean? Um, the typing is kind of overwhelming the microphone a little bit. Oh, sorry. There, I didn't hear the last little bit of your question. This is Darcy. Last bit of that was, um, she said, someone mentioned cleaning materials and quarantines for return materials. Is anyone doing anything else, any faster ways of cleaning? I don't think you can be faster. Um, we were just following the guidelines. Yeah. We're, um, so this is Campbell County. We're doing curbside pickup. We've been doing it, um, what, since mid-March? And and also um, the Children's Department is doing grab bags, and that's been super popular. Um, it's still curbside pickup. Um, the, yeah, we extended all due dates until June 1st on all materials. With the returns, everything is quarantined. How many hours? I think it's 40, 48 to 72. We just have them in big book return bins, and then um, things are wiped down and, and put back on the shelf. Most of our materials are covered with that um, plastic laminate kind of um, covering, book covering. Um, if you have the staff to do it, and if you're able to still be in the building, um, and then, and I don't know each of your individual situations, we're in building and working half time here, half time from home. Um, our patrons, especially school age parents and preschool parents have loved the grab bag service because they don't want to scroll through the catalog and put a lot of things on hold. So what they'll do is just call our children's department. We take names and age, not really eight names, just ages and reading levels of the children and what their interest areas might be, like dinosaurs or whatever. And then we curate a small bag of books to send home for that family. We're saying that it's it would be available to be picked up the next day. We get their library card number. So our process is to take the call, take down all of the information, staff selects books that fit that reading interest level, um, reading level, and then um, we check them out with their card number, we bag them up, and then the next day when the patron is in the parking lot, they call us and we put it out on our table, which is where we're doing curbside delivery. So staff steps the books outside in a bag, sets them on the table, and then goes back into the building. Um, of course, everything is done, you know, really carefully as far as gloves and things. And then patrons um, come to the table and pick up their bag. It's got their name on it and things like that. So um, it's been a great service. Our patrons have definitely appreciated that they don't have to put all the books on hold. I mean, especially if all you want is like 20 you know, easy readers for your preschool kiddo or, or I mean, your, your first grade kiddo and you don't care what they are, you don't have to scroll through the catalog and do all the holds. And some of our parents don't know how to put books on holds anyway, so this is an easier way for them to do that. It's just a suggested service if you've got the staff and you can be in your building to do that. Darcy, um, you had a question about what type of bags you're using. Um, my goodness. Um, what did we, we have a supply of bags, like plastic bags that, um, I don't even know what they were left over from. Um, and they were just down in storage. And so we've been using up these, they're kind of heavier plastic bags, but we do have to double bag. Cause I mean, you know, like picture books are big and they're bulky. And so we do have to do that. Um, but I think, I don't know that that matters. I think you could use grocery bags, you know, but um, we had a supply of bags from something that were down in our storage room that we've been using up. And I think that's probably a good idea because I'm 
I'm wondering, this is Chris, um, part of that is the worry about contamination of old grocery bags. Right, um, old grocery bags wouldn't be a good idea, no. These are all brand new. Yeah, these are all brand new bags. So mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, alternatively what you might be able to find to purchase, but it should, these were all in boxes and they are brand new bags, so they're not contaminated, right? Yeah. And I have another question for you, Darcy. Do you have um, any kind of quarantine between pulling the books and getting them to the patron? Um, no, we are not because um, we're we're making sure that we're pulling books with gloves. But it is a 24-hour, you know, pickup before it's um, picked up. I don't know that that's not that that 48-hour. Um, what we've had our um, public health personnel review our curbside process and they've approved every step of it so um, we're just following their directives This is Paige, and going back to the reading tracker apps, um, it sounds like most libraries are interested. Um, is this something that, and uh, again, a lot of libraries already are doing it, but is it something that if it were provided statewide, if there were some way to have funds, is there interest in that? Yes, this is Beth, but I mean, I'm sure it depends on where everybody is in their subscriptions and um, the cost, the usability, etc. Yeah, okay. And, and I, I guess, guess I, oh. go ahead, this is Darcy. Um, I wonder about um, personalization, like, like, would we all have to do the same reading program? Because mm -hmm. I feel like that might be a really difficult thing. I, I don't know, but I'm mm -hmm. just thinking the level of personalization with 23 county libraries might be um, more than more than that can be more than can be managed. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I would say that um, I imagine that the personalization thing could still be there. Um, I think it would be great um, if down the road that we looked at that as a state um, as a state thing. I don't think it's really feasible for this year because some of us have already started things and then mm -hmm. like with the beans back how long it takes to get them set up. But I will say with the read squared at least um, that um, and I can send out I can get this information to you guys Paige and Chris. Um, the state of New York and the state of Connecticut have um, their state libraries have um, picked read squared. And then I know some other states, I think maybe have used bean stack, but, um, but they can still customize each library has a license okay. to use it, but they can still customize whatever they want to do for their particular library, whether they want to count, you know, minutes or activities or, or whatever. So I think that's still an option. What I would say to libraries that um, are smaller, um, though, that are interested in an online thing is seriously check out um, Reader Zone. It's super simple to set up um, and their pricing is very clear and right there on their website. So if you just go to, I guess it's readerzone.com, um, they do it um, monthly. And then they have different options, whether you want to pay monthly all year round, so you can use it for different programs like winter reads, this, that, or the other thing. Um, and they have, um, or you can just do it for the summer, or, you know, they have all sorts of different things. And then they also do it by the number of readers that you have. And so if you, you know, if you have your stats from previous years, how many readers you can kind of estimate how much and um, it was really affordable, like maybe I think up to 750 readers, maybe it was like 50 or $60 a month, somewhere in that range. 
Unfortunately, after like 750, it jumped up to like 2,500, like made this big, huge jump. And so for us, if we had chosen reader zone, we would have been in that next jump and it went up to like 100 and something per month. But I would definitely look at that one. You can um, sign up for like a free demo thing where they'll show you how it all works. And um, they have a lot of really great, you know, great options. Um, you can actually use it free right now, I think until, I can't remember, it's till the end of April or till the end of May. So if you wanted to like test it out on just like a quarantine, quarantine read program or something, you could try it. Um, but I would definitely check that one out. Okay, thank you. One thing statewide, I had a question on um, Chris, and this isn't, um, I haven't looked into it that much, but when I, I happen to actually have been in Washington State right before all this started, and um, one of the libraries there, um, and I've seen other libraries, they have a subscription to something called, I think it's Creative Bug, which is like craft classes or whatever. Yeah, I, I think was, Converse is doing that. Converse do County. Converse County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just curious, you know, if as a state, if they had like any special <laughs> trial deals or anything that we could maybe look into that we could use for some programming options, because I was reading that if you have that, you have public um, showing rights or something like that, if you have that can, database. Yeah, can anybody speak to that? Um, Rita, do you know um, about Creative Bug? and how that works. Let me unmute you here. Hope you're self-muted, so. So if you could just put it in the chat or unmute yourself, let us know. Um, and This so, is Campbell County. We have Creative Bug 2 and we haven't used it much for youth services. Our reference department has used it for a couple of adult programs, but I don't know about like, you know, um, they've mostly just used it in a way where um, they've got examples of crafts from the database that people could do. Um, Kuhi Choiberger might have more information about that. She'd be a person to contact here at Campbell County. What was her name, Darcy? Let me type it because it's um, you have to learn how to spell it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and while she's doing that, um, uh, quick just backtrack to some things that came in on Reader Zone. Um, Renee says that um, Reader Zone also is offering free webinars right now. And the app is free and you can try, you can download it and try it for free right now. So okay. um, we are also getting close to the end of the hour. Um, and I think Chris, you wanted to share some things about CSLP. I did. Um, and I don't want to take a lot of time just because I think the reason we did this spring chat in place of our spring meeting was exactly what's happened today and i hope that's been useful i'm getting the feeling that maybe we should have another spring chat um, soon but in regards to the cslp um, just a couple reminders well one reminder is that um, if you had ordered the posters early on before they pulled them down because of the um, native american issue native american art issue i do have a copy of the art statement uh, if you're interested in that just contact me and if you just need a little more updating on what what you should and shouldn't be doing with some of that art um, we also have um, they've also sent out a survey and i need to kind of pull that together on my end but I'll put out some of the questions. I think I can glean most of it from the minutes today. 
um, they want to know and they're they're so that they can put the tools together things about programming partnerships in all the things that we've talked about today what your biggest concerns are um, they also are wanting to know if your school is closed for the remainder of the year and if you work with your meals programs and I think if we do another one of these chats I'll just create some polls for those otherwise I'll just get an email out uh, when we send all this information out to you so if you have any questions about CSLP specifically um, put those in the question box or just um, chime in and so in the final well I guess we are out of time I guess this was a great thing. It seemed to go really well. Um, Paige, do you have anything you wanted to add at the end? Um, no, just thank everyone. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, the recording will be available and I'll send the notes out um, after I clean them up just a little bit. But um, yeah, if you have any other questions, you can email Chris or I and we will send out information um, for another spring chat in the near future. Thank you ladies for organizing this. I think it's been super helpful. Would it be helpful to do another chat about this? Yes, yes, yes I think so. Okay, we'll do it um, mm -hmm. maybe as soon as next week and we'll, um, I know some people had some virtual programming on Wednesdays, we'll try to do it on a different, time slot so wonderful I think that might be wise or even in the afternoon rather than morning possibly. Right. yeah we'll move it to a different day in the afternoon yeah okay. for sure so spread the word to other folks that want to get on and we'll we'll make that happen thank you thanks ladies yes have a great day everybody hey. stay safe yes. hey Paige can we save the, somehow save the questions yeah I'm I'm I think we can. Um, so let me try and figure out how to do that. I know, because I'm not seeing. Well, oh, save chat or save questions log. Ha, huh, there. Where did you find that? Um, under oh, file. That's where I was headed. Ah, and but I have to save it to a drive. So let me see. I have my thumb drive in. Do you want me to save it? Oh, you sure can. Or do you have a drive to save it to? I have a drive on my computer. I mean, yeah, I, I have a drive open. Okay. I'll just save it real quick. And then I will sh share that out. Okay. Let's, uh, so the comments, the, thanks so much. Let's do another. Yes, definitely another, definitely. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, this was awesome. Yay. I know, it was just right. Yes. And yeah, all right, I guess we can close up the meeting. Um, this has been recorded. Great. So let's and leave the questions log and you were taking notes. So I think we've captured it. Oh okay. What just happened? Oh, I know what happened. Okay. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I opened the drive. I heard music, so I was like, what, what's going on? What, what happened? <laughs> okay. So are we ready to close this up? I uh, let me just make sure I don't have a question I left. But we think we've captured them. Okay, I think we can close her down. Okay. All right. You want to hang out? You want to do a hangout here in in just a few minutes? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Shutting down. Toodles. <laughs> Bye. All right.